Kelly, it's another beautiful Thursday. Good to see you. Things are heating up, Lisa. It's, I think summer's upon us here in South Florida, and uh, we are excited because that means, what, more boating, right? More boating. Yay. All right. Tell everybody what's coming up on today's boating broadcast. Another excellent episode coming up uh, for Marine Max Boating Broadcast today. We're going to start off with our headlines and a look into the Galleon website. They have an all-new Galleon website, yes. so you got to check that out. Uh, a lot of cool new models. The 2021 Nautique Regatta event dates. Hmm, so there's gonna be some cool events around Nautique Damn. boats. That'll be pretty cool. And the Boston Whaler 325 Conquest. There's a new boattest.com review of that particular boat, the 325 Conquest. So you gotta check Very that nice. out. We have our special guest, Mr. Will Chimino from uh, Seakeeper, who he is the global director of sales. Uh, we've seen Will at many a boat show, many of events. Yep. And, uh, looking forward to chatting all things Seakeeper with him. And we'll wrap up with Landon and get this, Lisa, massive waves and evolving sharks. I'm wondering if that is one thing or two different things. And uh, I guess we'll have to find out. Yes, got to stick around to find out. Welcome to From the Helm Boating Broadcast with Marine Max, bringing you the latest news and notes in the world of boats. Welcome to From the Helm Boating Broadcast, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. We are your hosts. I am Lisa and that guy over there. His name is Kelly. Hello, hello. <laughs> Please interact with us in the comments section on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, we are going to be interacting with you back if you do. And then share this with your friends and family. If they're into boating, we'd love some more people to get involved. Mm -hmm. Share with us your ideas. Who should we interview next? That's what I'd like to know. Oh, yeah. uh, for our audio only listeners, thank you so much for joining us. If you'd like to see what you're hearing, you can go to the Marine Max website or through the Marine Max app. Go to the Lifestyles blog se section. There is a whole uh, From the Helm Boating broadcast area. Mm -hmm. You can catch up on previous episodes. You can see the video and the transcript from today's episode. Yeah. All right. So speaking of transcript and websites, let's get into headlines. Let's do it. And a brand new Galleon website. So this is Boom. pretty cool. Anytime anybody updates a website, it's just neat. There's so much yeah. new capability today than there was, you know, even a year ago. Yeah, it's, it's uh, I mean, I've, I've been on the Galleon website trying to find my perfect Galleon so many times, Lisa. And, uh, <laughs> you know, this update is beautiful. And it's, I guess, you know, the whole point of updating a website, it's also just ease of use and functionality, too, and, and making it easier for the person to look around uh, to see all the latest and greatest, especially in this case, uh, a boat company, uh, yacht company, uh, all the latest and greatest models up close and personal. So uh, here we have the 400 fly, the 420, and uh, this is the one I want to click on here is the new GTO. GTO. So you can learn all about these all new models uh, from Galleon uh, on their website, which is galleonyachts.us. So be sure to check that out. Really cool. Yes, new functionality, enhanced boat listings, better mm -hmm. user experience, faster load times, and just more beautiful imagery of the Galleon lineup. Videos, I mean, you can see all the latest videos from the GTO. You got the in-depth walkthrough here, which I know has been a big hit with uh, with Galleon, that, you know, walking through that boat, talking about it. Oh, look at that sweet, uh, the fold down side, Lisa. You always said uh, that, what are they called? Beach I love runners. those. And it's so cool. That is yeah, so check cool. Check it out for yourself. That was just a teaser. Okay, I'm not going to watch <laughs> the whole thing. You got to see it for yourself on galleonyachts.us. Yes. Best place to go if you're thinking about uh, the Galleon range. Mm -hmm. Everything is very well organized. Great to walk through. Uh, very cool stuff there. Beautiful boats. Beautiful boats. Oh, yeah. So flipping the script onto some more beautiful boats. Nautique announced dates for their 2021 regattas. So these are events, get togethers for Nautique owners. And there are a couple of Marine Max stores that are uh, getting pulled in, one in Georgia, one in Texas. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to make sure we shouted this out. Um, very cool stuff from Nautique. Yeah, yeah, uh, 2021 regattas. So, you know, again, things are coming back. And uh, 2020 was kind of a wacky year with uh, events. Some people had them, some people didn't. The ones that did were Kind of all sparse and but they're basically they're saying hey let's let's wrap it up let's uh let's get these nautique owners together and yeah. uh, and, and go for a, a, a fun time and uh, that is a cool way to do it especially with a cool company like like nautique in some of these cool areas including uh buford georgia uh, rockwell texas arizona some really cool spots to go boating yeah so if you're in the georgia texas or arizona area look up the nautique uh the 2021 regatta dates, mm -hmm. very fun stuff. You know, it's a, it's a chance to get together with people who enjoy the same things you do, right? Yep. It's like your Jeep club or your, you know, bike club. Yep. It's your nautique club. You get together, you appreciate everybody. And then you can look at everybody else's boats. They're so pretty. 
<laughs> yeah. You yeah. know, they're and they're all very interesting and they got such really cool, unique uh, technology aboard. So it's it's cool to check out other what other people have. I wonder if the Paragon's going to be there in some way, shape or form. I always want to see that one on the water. Betcha. It was very sharp looking boat. Very sharp. Lisa, do you boat. think if they all played the same song at the same time on, you know, because those Nautiques have like insane sound systems. You could probably hear that from like space or something. I would think <laughs> with all those boats like lined up like this, just playing. I bet the you're right, Kelly. <laughs> All right, challenge initiated, Team Nautique. Let's yeah, hear let's, you from space. Let's see uh, what kind of noise violations we can get in those particular oh, states. Geez. Oh, <laughs> love your fun, yeah. community. Be sure to check it out. Uh, and uh, that's, uh, in this particular case, the WWA.com World Wake Association. Uh, you can learn more about the Nautique Regatta for 2021. Yep. And of course, we link to everything we discuss here in headlines in our film transcript and our notes on the yep. Lifestyles blog on the Marine Max website. So if you can't remember uh, anything, go to the Marine Max Lifestyles blog section. You'll find yep. it all there. All right. So switching gears again, we are going fishing boats this time with the Boston Whaler 325 Conquest. And this is our friends from BoatTest.com who do an excellent job thoroughly reviewing pretty much all makes and models of boats. Yeah, and Captain Steve is here on the 325 Conquest, uh, the latest and greatest model here. And uh, man, he's got a sweet job, right? I mean, he uh -huh. pretty much gets out there and gets to sea trial all of the latest boats, including one of my personal favorites, the Conquest line. And, uh, you know, I think yeah, 325 is the smallest in the lineup for them, uh, but definitely packs a punch and just a, such a great fishing boat and a great family mm -hmm. boat and just a great all around boat for sure. Yeah, definitely. Uh, really nice because you can get some protection from the elements with that, um, the the way it's designed. Spacious yes. cockpit, um, convertible seating, a cabin that can sleep up to four, and a power provided by twin Mercury outboards up to 400 horsepower. So oh, yeah. lots of power and lots of options there. So very cool boat. Yeah, and definitely check this out with uh, BoatTest.com, uh, Captain Steve, and uh, the all-new 320, I wouldn't say all-new, but the latest and greatest of the 325 Conquest from Boston. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Right. All right, we got things from Galleon, Nautique, Boston Whaler, and now, if you'd like to be a little bit more comfortable aboard your boat, we're going to talk to Seakeeper and how they can eliminate boat roll and maybe eliminate your seasickness. All right, everyone, please welcome Mr. Will Chimino, Seakeeper's Global Director of Sales. Bring him in. How Bring you doing, him in. Will? There he is. Hey, good morning, Kelly, Lisa. Thank you guys for having me. Thank yes. you. And and typically, you know, when we're talking Seakeeper, we're aboard some boat and it's uh, you're showing the demonstration of uh, on and off. But, uh, Will, tell us a, a little bit about uh, your role with Seakeeper and a little bit, uh, you know, I, we have discussed Seakeeper in the past, but maybe a little bit of background of Seakeeper as well. Sure. Um, so Will Chimino, I head up sales for the company. We have about 25 team members spread out across the globe, everywhere from Europe to literally every region across the United States. Um, the simple explanation of a seakeeper is that we eliminate boat roll. Um, and with a press of a button, it's the easiest way to ensure that you and your guests on board have uh, a great time on the water and, and make the most of your time together. Um, of course, you, you want more than the most simple explanation of what a Seakeeper is. Uh, just getting into some of the technicalities of the product, um, we have the sphere, which is a vacuum mm -hmm. sealed enclosure. And inside of that sphere, we spin a steel flywheel. Uh, it speeds up to 550 miles an hour. And wow. the Seakeeper uses natural gyroscopic principles uh, to eliminate boat roll. So, it's the very same thing that allows you to ride a bike and keep your bicycle upright. Okay. Um, as the boat rolls from side to side, the sphere will tilt, we call it precess, towards the bow and towards the stern of the boat. And when it does that, it outputs a stabilizing force that keeps the boat level in the water. So it's almost like a magical hand comes down and holds the boat uh, level in the water and reduces all of that side to side roll motion that can be uh, upsetting or uncomfortable when you're when you're mm -hmm. on a boat. Yeah, and you mentioned. I mean, I, I don't know if it, it seems like it'd be obvious, but you know, boat roll meaning basically what you see in this image here of the boat rocking back and forth. And and for years, I remember even as a little kid being out there and you know somewhere off the coast of New Jersey, somewhere on the ocean, and the boat's just rocking, and it's like I'm like I'm not having a good time, you know, as a little kid. And and you kind of think about those things, but. It, now the future is here and a lot of those issues can be 
you know, can be eliminated with, with a product like Seakeeper. So it's just such cool uh, technology. And, and as you discuss a little bit more, I'd love to just show this because it's such a cool animation on your website, seakeeper.com, um, how it works and, and what goes into it. Because it's such a technological masterpiece of, of a piece <laughs> of equipment, Lisa. And uh, so, yeah, yeah, uh, we'd love to hear a little bit more. Sure, so if you wanna just click through here. Um, so here you can see the main uh, components and subsystems of the Seakeeper. On the left there, the ball, that's the sphere that I was talking about. Mm -hmm. So the sphere houses the, the critical components and keeps them safe from the elements. So you mm -hmm. have the steel flywheel inside of the sphere, the motor that, that powers and spins that flywheel, as well as the bearings that allows everything to operate smoothly. Yep. So you can see it there. And, and the reason that we operate everything inside of a vacuum sealed environment is one, to keep them safe from the elements, but more importantly, to allow us to operate in the most efficient package as possible. Mm -hmm. So right. space, weight, power, they're all very scarce resources on a boat. And our job is to deliver the stabilization uh, required to make our customers happy in the smallest, mm -hmm. lightest package possible. Right. And the cooling too is, is something that's kind of a, a pretty big part of this too. And, and it's, it's liquid cooled, right? It's uh, with water or water and was it glycol? I remember, I think I remember that Lisa. That's right, that's right, Kelly. So it's a glycol seawater combination that we use to cool and dissipate heat from inside of the sphere. So just as you see highlighted here in blue, mm -hmm. on the left is the heat exchanger. So it brings in raw water uh, from the ocean or if you're in fresh water, fresh water uh, from a lake uh, or a river and it mixes with the, the glycol that's in a closed cooling loop and it circulates um, in the top cooling cover there uh, that you see highlighted on top of the sphere and dissipates that heat. So it allows us to, again, utilize, spin that flywheel faster, which reduces the weight required uh, to produce a given uh, level of stabilization. And it allows you to install the Seakeeper anywhere on board where you don't have to worry about ventilating it to keep it cool. Mm -hmm. Right. Nice. So when when I think about this type of technology, I my mind goes to bigger boats, right? Like cruise ships and and bigger boats. But the first graphic on your website, I mean, that's a center foot or a center console, you know, maybe 23 foot boat that mm -hmm. was there. So talk a little bit about who can have a seakeeper on their boat. Yeah, it's a, it's a great question, Lisa. So we have 10 different Seakeeper models, uh, starting with the Seakeeper 1, going all the way up to the Seakeeper 35. And with the introduction of the Seakeeper 1, which is our newest model to the lineup, we launched it last year at the Miami Boat Show uh, and started mm -hmm. shipping it in June. Uh, Seakeeper is available for anyone uh, with a boat 23 feet and up. And really the upper end of our range uh, tops out around 150, 200 feet, depending on the, the characteristics of the boat. Um, but really the vision of, of Seakeeper from the start was to bring stabilization to smaller boats, entry level boating, where you know people are getting their first experience on the water. And we think that having that experience be a positive one, uh, it helps to grow the industry and get more people into the sport that we all know and love. No, absolutely agreed. I have I've had the pleasure of being aboard uh, a boat as it is rocking and rolling from side to side. And when you hit that button to engage the Seakeeper, it was really it just kind of stables out. It, and it's really miraculous because you go from not really feeling that great and kind of being a little stressed out mm -hmm. to like, oh, I could stay the rest of the afternoon out on the water because you just you just took away that whole piece of me not liking being out here. It makes exactly boaters, right. what I've seen is it, it makes people who want a boat, who might not want, they want a boat, but they don't want the role. Mm -hmm. Now they have their solution. And, and it, a lot of people who wouldn't be boaters, they are now boaters because of it. Right. That's right. Obviously I'm a little partial, but I, I grew up <laughs> on the water. Uh, I'm sure like you all did as well, but yeah. it's, uh, it's very hard to go back once you're on a boat with a sea keeper to go back to a boat that doesn't have one. And fortunately, we have thousands of customers on the water that, that feel similarly and, and need that Seakeeper stabilization when they're out on the water. Right, so obviously you can see the size ranges right here. So if you wanted to refit your boat with a Seakeeper, that's an option. But when it comes to manufacturers and new boat production, are you seeing the Seakeeper being uh, a part of that as a standard option? Absolutely, so we work with almost every major uh, OEM boat manufacturer in the world 
Um, we have over 300 partners spread out across the globe and they either mm -hmm. offer Seakeeper as an option. So, um, you know, a piece of equipment that you'd have to select if you wanted in your particular build or as a standard. And about 25 of our partners offer Seakeeper as a standard. So no matter what, if you buy a Scout 425, for example, it's going to come with a Seakeeper on board. And then if you look at a brand like Azimut, um, literally every Azimut that's coming into the United States, the Marine yep. Max, is getting Seakeeper stabilization as well. Mm -hmm. So for us, it's all about um, you know end user demand and the the end user and customer pulling our product um, through the through the chain. Well, I think it's something that you know you mentioned Azimut and Scout. I mean, it's it's something that our customers have been asking for. They've been you know checking that box as an option for many years, and I think at a certain point. You know, the manufacturers and in Marine Max were like, hey, let's just make this part of the boats because everybody's asking for it anyway. Uh, and, and just, yeah, I've been, have been, having been aboard a, both a Scout and an Azimut, uh, it, it's, it's a no brainer when you're out on the water. Absolutely. And Lisa, you brought up uh, another good point, which is refit installation. So uh, about 75% of our sea keepers are sold through new boats that OEMs have installed in their, in their production uh, facilities. But we mm -hmm. also refit. Uh, sea keepers as well. So if you have a used boat, we have uh, over 200 certified sea keeper installers spread out across the world. And about 25% of our installations are done on used boats. Uh, so you're having to get creative and find space on board uh, to put a sea keeper on board. Wow. That, I feel like that's got to be quite the task to, to find space for, for this amazing piece of machinery. Um, I, I vaguely remember, because we did sit down, I believe it was with Kelsey and, and Nick, uh, and talked right. about the Seakeeper 1 when, when that was first debuted. And that is, mm -hmm. was correct me if I'm wrong, was that designed to go pretty much anywhere? Yeah, like all of our models, it can go um, anywhere on board. Typically, we say 60% of uh of the boat uh aft so we don't want it to be mm -hmm. on the on the very front of the bow of the boat right. um but the real advantage to the seakeeper one and we see this very commonly with the with our dc products so the seakeeper one two and three is that it's very easy to deck mount and that's a popular location um, for manufacturers to install the product on board so it's it's a flush mount design and makes it very easy just to tuck underneath the seat or in the leaning post uh, where it's not necessarily competing with other features on board that the customer may, may also want. Right. How, how cool would that be though, Lisa? I mean, just, I'm looking at this image uh, on their website here of just some of these old like sea rays and things, you know, that your vintage boat that you've loved for so many years, or you wanted as a child or younger person, and you can finally afford it now and, and refitting it with a sea keeper. I mean, what cool thing that, you know, you can use it, kind of take an old school boat and bring it new school like that. I'm sure. And it says here, uh, more than 3,000 refits to date. So clearly people are, are getting that memo for sure. And a lot of that's driven by resale value as well. So if, if you're right. trying to sell a boat in the used market today, uh, most people are going to ask one of their first you know, two questions. They might say what engines are on board and how many hours they have and does the boat have a sea keeper? And uh, that's really a big driver for, for refit installations. And just as you said, Kelly, it's, it's amazing to see um, I really, uh, really get excited when I see people taking a really old boat that almost is worth nothing anymore and they're redoing it. Maybe it was their grandfather's boat that got yeah. passed down and they put a sea keeper on board. It's, it's really cool to see those projects come to life as well. Oh, yeah. Wow. No, I mean, OK, so how do you determine what size sea keeper for what size boat? Like, how does that. Hmm. How do you figure that out? Yeah, it's, it's a great a great question, Lisa. So the Seakeeper models have a number after each of them. So the Seakeeper 1, for example, that 1 stands for the horsepower, the stabilization horsepower of that Seakeeper model. So okay. the 1, okay. uh, Seakeeper 1 provides 1,000 Newton meter seconds of stabilization. And for boats under 37 feet, we have a very uh, simplified sizing methodology, just given that the boats have more similar um, characteristics in terms mm -hmm. of beam, dead rise. And uh, Kelly, if you go on the website into products, sure. at the very bottom there is our small boat sizing guide. It should be down just a bit to the left. For some reason, I can't scroll, but it's because of this program, I think. So it doesn't let me okay. get any further down. Um, I think if you click on like the Seakeeper one, it may, may be navigable okay. there as well. But anyways, we use 
Uh, just the length and the beam. Oh, here we there go. You go. Length and beam on the primarily for boats that are taking the Sea Keeper one, two, or three to mm -hmm. determine uh, what's best. So if you put a nine foot beam and a 25 foot length, then sure. you'll see that the recommended configuration is okay. a Sea Keeper one. Oh, excellent. That's cool. and for, yeah. And in boats that are larger than 37 feet, we provide performance predictions uh, for either a refit customer or for our OEMs. So if you're buying a new boat, you can rest assured that we've worked uh, in partnership with with the uh, with your OEM, your builder, to uh, to ensure that they have the right Sea Keeper model on board. Okay, that's so cool. That is very cool. I feel like they it would it's got to take up some space. Yeah, no? it's so that's that's another thing is I mean we've you know we've seen one in person, we've seen the Sea Keeper one, but for those who might not be aware, you know how. You can see the picture, and you, it's hard to gauge how big these are. In but, uh, could you give the the viewers out there kind of an idea as to how big these actually are? Yeah, absolutely. So the Sea Keeper One is uh, it's essentially a two foot cube. So okay. the the dimensions of the base are about two feet by two feet. It's a little smaller than that, and it's sixteen inches high. Uh, volumetrically, it's very similar to a Yeti sixty cooler. So okay. you think yeah. about just putting a cooler on board your boat. Uh, that keeps your drinks uh, nice and cold. The Sea Keeper One will keep everybody smiling all day long in a pretty similar <laughs> uh, footprint. That's awesome. Wow. And, and, and some of these these larger ones, you can just tuck them away, right? I mean, it's it's something where you know refits, obviously, but some of these boats are becoming you know there's there's places that are perfect for them down maybe in the engine rooms and in in certain areas like that, correct? That's right. That's right. And as more uh, brands have integrated Seakeeper, it makes adding Seakeeper to a boat um, as an aftermarket installation a lot easier as well because the structure is there, the space has already been accommodated for it, and that helps with resale value as well. If the first owner doesn't want Seakeeper, then it's a lot easier for the second owner uh, to mm -hmm. make that happen. Sure. So when you're talking about refits, where, where does the power come from to power the, the Seakeeper? So it, it really depends on the Seakeeper model. So the Seakeeper right. 1, 2, and 3 are DC powered. So they're battery powered oh, okay. um, uh, pieces of equipment. And then the Seakeeper 5 and above are AC powered. So they require a generator on board. Okay. So okay. just for example, we have a 27 uh, Sea Hunt uh, as our one of our demo boats. And I believe that boat comes standard with two starting batteries and then two house batteries. We mm -hmm. added um, a fifth battery on board, and then the Seakeeper is just tied into that main house battery bank. So the same battery bank that's powering the radio or the stereo system or your MFDs, the Seakeeper is also tied into that. And then you have alternator power coming off of the engines that keeps the uh, battery bank charged, similar to how the, the power system works mm -hmm. on your car, for example. Okay. Very interesting. Okay. So um, there's a little bit about power. So the flywheel, I know that doesn't just stop spinning when you're, when you're done. Do you have to keep power to the boat while the flywheel is spinning down or does it, you know, do you unplug it like a fan and it'll just automatically stop? So essentially you, you turn the Seakeeper off and the Seakeeper is locked into place. So the flywheel still spins and because it's mm -hmm. in that frictionless vacuum, It'll continue to spin for several hours, but you don't really need to do anything to accommodate that. So you just okay. power it off and, and you're all set and ready to go. Um, but really starting up the Sea Keeper and enjoying all of its benefits are very simple. Mm -hmm. You get on board your boat, you power up, um, you power up the boat, turn your Sea Keeper on. The Sea Keeper 1, for example, takes 15 minutes to reach stabilization. And at that point, another button will appear on the display that allows yep. you to unlock the Sea Keeper. So you're um, unlocking the brake system that controls the procession of that sphere and allow it to, to start to make its magic work. Right. Okay. So that's something you could do as you're, say, you know, you know, cruising out of a channel and getting mm -hmm. into deeper water, right? 15 minutes, letting the Sea Keeper spin up as you're cruising out. That's right. Or, you know, you get to your boat, you're going to warm the engines up anyways. Yep. Mm -hmm. As soon as you fire up your engines, start uh, start spooling yes. your Sea Keeper up as well and load your food, drinks, and family on board. And by the time you're ready to, to push off, the, your Sea Keeper is going to be ready to go. Excellent. Okay. So second question about the flywheel. For people who are trailering, do you mm -hmm. have to do anything special to before you can load the boat on the trailer? 
No, uh, unfortunately, because that, no, that okay. flywheel can take several hours to spool right. down all the way. So as soon as you know, you're coming to, to pull your boat out of the water, you just shut your system off. It's locked in place and there's nothing you need to do to, to put the boat on a trailer and, and, um, and drive it on the road. Okay. So as simple as that, power on, power off. That's right. <laughs> I wouldn't even right. thought of that, Lisa. That's an interesting point of, you know, when you're, you're in a car or on the road, as opposed to in the water, does it act any differently? But that's a, uh, no, that, that's great. And, and, and it is pretty cool. I mean, especially you just seeing it in action where you get out there to a place and, and you're rocking and rolling all over the place and people are just like, you know, let's see what this thing can do. Not, you know, people that, especially people have never experienced it before. And then they hit that switch and then they look around and they see that horizon just flatten out. It's just, it is just spectacular what, what it does. And people 20 years ago, 30 years ago would just be like, would marvel at something like this. It's just incredible. It's cool. And, it, and it's really neat when you're in an area where like in a fishing tournament, for example, where there are a lot of boats in, in a you know more confined area, you can look around and you can tell which boats have a sea keeper and which ones don't. Um, uh -huh. And and on many days, the ones that do are, are looking at everybody else uh, laughing a little bit inside um, and happy that they have a sea keeper on board. Oh, yeah. I can only imagine. So if somebody wanted to see this in action, how do they go about doing that? Obviously, we've got some YouTube videos, but um, are are they prevalent? I mean, among like the dealerships, can I just stop by my local Marine Max and go check out a Sea Keeper in action? Absolutely. So, um, if if you're shopping for a boat at Marine Max, I would say uh, it, there's a very very strong chance that there is a Sea Keeper stabilized boat at any of the Marine Max locations that you could mm -hmm. you could demo. Uh, we also have our own factory demo boats. Um, one down in Florida, and shortly we'll have one moving up into uh, the Mid-Atlantic Northeast region. We also have uh, one in Europe as well. And then many of our partners, uh, our certified dealers, have uh, Seakeeper demo boats as well. Um, just navigating on our website, if you go to Explore, I believe, um, we have a, a link there, Schedule a Demo. And oh. you can explore all of our partner okay. demo boats, just where they're located on board and contact them directly or contact Seakeeper directly. And we can make sure that you have an opportunity to, to see trial a boat and demo it firsthand. For sure. And I'm sure, you know, as, uh, as these boat shows begin to, to come back a little bit, it's always such a cool place to be at like the Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show or one of these bigger boat shows and see it firsthand on the docks and you got your guys out there rocking and rolling the boats and it is uh, pretty cool to see in a, in a situation like that. Yeah, definitely. And this weekend, uh, the Palm Beach Boat Show is obviously going on and we have our crew there uh, with a Sea Keeper demo boat with a Sea Keeper one on board. Uh, so nice. if you're if you're looking to experience it this weekend, that's uh, that's an option. Excellent. All right. So I know it, it's another system on a boat that probably requires maintenance. What is all involved with that piece of it? Yeah, great, great question, Lisa. Um, fortunately, the Sea Keeper, while it is a, a pretty complex, seemingly complex piece of equipment, the maintenance is pretty simple. Uh, the Sea Keeper 5 and above, so the AC models, have a zinc on the heat exchanger that needs to be inspected or replaced every 150 hours or every three months. And then otherwise, there's really two primary uh, service interventions that you would do every year or every thousand hours. So it kind of depends on, on how much you use mm -hmm. the boat. Um, you would flush the hydraulic system, uh, which is the brakes that, that control the, the procession of the sphere um, and flush the glycol cooling system as well. Um, but it's a pretty, pretty simple annual service and all of our um, partner network, our dealers are well equipped to, to knock that out pretty quickly for you. Excellent. All right. Yeah, and if, if you have an opportunity, be sure to check out, of course, seakeeper.com. There's a really cool frequently asked questions area here with a lot of the questions that we're going through today are answered directly on there. I love this one here, Will. Will Seakeeper scare fish away? That's, uh, you know, you don't oh, think about it. Like, oh, I don't know. Maybe there's some sort of like, you know, vibration in the water or something. That's, a, that's an interesting question. Yeah, so the Seakeeper is designed to output a uh, minimal amount of noise and, and should put out no vibration, structural borne vibration into the boat. Um, you know, that's a, those are key features for our customers to enjoy the product. But mm -hmm. uh, absolutely, you know, a lot of our customers 
are using their boats for fishing, whether it's offshore or inshore, and the sea keeper is, is quiet and, and isn't going to affect your ability to catch fish. Um, so you can see uh, some team members here that did some inshore fishing where being yeah. extra quiet is, uh, is pretty important. And uh, they had a great day on board. And, um, you know, just looking at that picture, I think that's a 25 foot boat. It's incredibly exciting to see Seakeeper, you know, being installed on boats that size and, and used mm -hmm. in applications like inshore fishing. Um, I don't think when Seakeeper was started in 2008, that was our vision, but um, it's amazing just to see how far the product has come in a, in a really short period of time. Yeah, um, you're thinking differently. I'm sure at the at the beginning of this whole thing, it was like, well, we have a, a mission to, you know, whatever it may be, this this length of boat or whatever. But I mean, as you guys continue to grow, and especially in the last five years, certainly are are willing to consider it. And I think that, you know, I'm guessing that's probably how some of these things can happen, where you're getting them on the 23 foot, 25 foot boats, and who knows what the future might have in store. That's right. Yeah, our our mission is to um, is to make the most of people's time on the water and transform the boating experience. And right when we came to market, people thought we were crazy. What's this big piece of equipment you're trying to put on board right. a boat? And slowly but surely, uh, people have experienced the Sea Keeper and seen how transformative it can be to to your time on the water. And um, you know, nobody thought that stabilization was appropriate for boats under 30 feet. But we made it happen with the Seakeeper One, and um, you know our customers are are fortunately proving us right and, and loving the product. And our builders are, I would say, every new boat in that size range that's being designed, Seakeeper is is a key consideration in finding room for it on board, um, mm -hmm. so that it can be an option for for our customers. Yeah, I think you might have a, a a new line in the tourism industry. So I was just down in Fort Myers with my family, and we went out on a pirate ship. I've got a four year old and a two two year old uh, niece and nephew, and it was a particularly rough day. And we went out of the Fort Myers Channel, and they turned right back around and came right back in. You oh, felt no. as soon as we got out, we started rocking and rolling, and they were like, "Okay, we're turning it right back around." Uh, but, and then I, I was talking to my dad, I was like, these guys need a sea keeper. They would have a, a gyro stabilization. We would be fine right now, but it was a beautiful day and, uh, it was a pirate ship. So I think there might be a future in some tourism with sea keeper. Hit those guys up. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to look up the pirate ship captain and, uh, and give him a call. I think I see a really good marketing opportunity there too. Like, uh, all your employees just have those stickers in their pocket. If they're ever in a situation like Lisa was, just slap that sticker that says "Should have had a sea keeper on it," and uh, you know maybe they'll they'll give the phone the phone number on there a call. Oh, that's that, too that's funny. That's a that's a great great idea, Kelly. Um, just one one point on the FAQ. I've I've been told that I'm the biggest fan of our FAQ uh, section, but it's it really is a great source of information, and because sea keeper is so new. Um, there's a lot of myths about it. And, and one of the, the key myths that we're um, always trying to educate customers on is what's, you know, why angular momentum? Why is that important for, why is that the measure of gyroscopic horsepower? So you just take engines, right? Everyone understands that horsepower is sort of the, the unit of measure of, of mm -hmm. output for, right. for an outboard engine. And for Seakeeper, right, we've defined and created this whole market um, from the beginning. And the reason we use angular momentum to describe uh, the output of the Sea Keeper is because it's torque available over time. Mm -hmm. And that time element is really critical to the amount of stabilization that you, that you enjoy. So the boat takes anywhere from two to eight seconds to complete a full, um, a full roll cycle. So tilting all the way to the right, back to, to the left, and then back to the right. And you need to be able to provide torque throughout that entire roll period right. to provide great stabilization. Otherwise, it sort of shutters and then the boat continues to roll. Yeah. You're not actually accomplishing anything. So that's a, <laughs> a big FAQ that we get commonly that I wanted to touch on. But there's tons of great information in this section, as you highlighted, Kelly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, so again, be sure to check this out at seakeeper.com slash FAQS facts. Uh, to learn more about that. And of course, just go to seakeeper.com and, and, and just check out all the latest models that they have of their products. I'm, I'm curious, and, and it's not really our industry here at Marine Max, but the heavy duty, the HD, uh, could you just briefly touch on that? Just because I keep seeing it over there on the right hand side. And is, is that for maybe tow boats and things like that? Or what is that? 
Yeah, it's for uh, commercial military applications, so really oh, wow. high hours. Um, applications. Our, our average customers use their Seakeeper in a recreational setting uh, mm -hmm. 500, 750 hours a year. So even our recreational customers are putting a lot of hours on the product as well. But when you have someone using using a Seakeeper over a thousand hours a year, an HD product is certainly something to consider. Um, okay. However, a lot of times, so you take the 7 HD, it's the same thing as our Seakeeper 9. It just spins slower so that all the components are under lower loads. Mm -hmm. And uh, we provide a four year, 4,000 hour warranty with our HD product to go with you know, the applications that, that they're being used in. Um, it's a relatively small part of our business. And sure. honestly, a lot of times people just opt for the higher amount of performance. So they want the Seakeeper 9 because right, it's a little more than 20% more performance in the same package as the 7 HD. And that's the route that oftentimes uh, customers will go. Okay. Very interesting. Good question, Kelly. It does Kelly. make you think, though. I mean, how, how many other? It's not always just about the fun, you know. You have the Coast Guard and the you know the the law enforcement out there. I mean, there's there's so many other mm. opportunities to where Seakeeper could be advantageous. So um, good to think about uh, for for not always just that we're gonna have a great time relaxing in the sun, but also you know put it to action, put it to use too. That's right. And in Absolutely. commercial applications, safety is is so critical. Um, to those operations and keeping the crews on board safe and uh, you know not having the ability to go out is certainly upsetting when when you're with your family but if you're in a commercial setting that may be money that you're not making as well so right. uh, we certainly have a place in, in commercial military law enforcement applications and um, that's a continues to be a growing segment for us uh, as well Very cool. right I would imagine maybe charter fishermen too right that's yeah, right. Those guys, yeah. That's I mean, right. they use their boat every day. They're out, you know, fishing mm -hmm. every day, uh, all day. That would be a great application, you know. It Excellent. is. It is. And we, it is. We have a few dozen uh, charter boats with center consoles all the way up to big sport fish boats that have Seakeeper on board and they get to enjoy it every day in their, in their home office. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a rough nice. life sometimes, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, excellent. Um, I know we could sit here and pick your brain all day, but uh, we will let you get back to what you are doing before we join the interview. Kelly, do you have any other questions? Um, I'm just looking to uh, looking forward to meeting up with you guys again and, and yeah. getting some more information uh, firsthand at a certain point here. So uh, it's you know it's great information, and uh, you know we'll mention the Palm Beach Boat Show if you if you if it's past that time. You know, there's a lot of boat shows coming up too. And, and like you mentioned, Will, uh, there's also demo opportunities throughout the country too. So, and I'm sure if you go to your local Marine Max, no matter where you are, there's a lot of boats here with uh, Sea Keepers currently installed on them. And if you want to ask, you know, how does that work? I'm sure you can do a sea trial and check it out. So be sure to check out your local Marine Max and, and check out that boat roll for yourself that you see down there in the bottom right and see how that kind of just magically turns off. <laughs> it is quite miraculous. All right, Will, anything else we missed that we should cover today? I think you guys did a, a great job um, poking and, and answering, uh, getting us to answer all the all the important questions about Seakeeper. Um, I really appreciate the opportunity uh, to chat with you guys this morning and, yeah. and always uh, appreciate Marine Max's partnership with the Seakeeper brand. Um, almost every brand that Marine Max is representing offers Seakeeper on the majority of the models. Mm -hmm. So um, as you said, Kelly, a Marine Max location might be a great place to start if you're interested in, in having a Seakeeper on board, uh, either demoing a boat or, or shopping for your next boat with a Seakeeper included. Wonderful. Awesome. Well, you can see videos and a lot more information on their website, but also on Facebook and Instagram. They've got some pretty good content where they do the demo. You can actually see it happen. you got guys standing on each side of the boat just rocking it back and forth. Seakeeper engages, and then those guys cannot rock anymore. It's pretty incredible to watch. It is even incredible. more incredible to experience for yourself. But um, check them out, and thank you so much, Will, for joining us. I'm sure thank we'll you, connect Will. with you, and and hopefully see you in person at an upcoming boat show. Absolutely, I look forward to it, and uh, thank you guys again. All right, All well, right. thank you, and uh, we'll see you soon, Will, and uh, have a great day. Good stuff, Kelly. Yeah, that that's that was pretty awesome. It's uh, it's always great to talk to uh, to Seakeeper and Will is just a, a plethora of knowledge. He has just so much information. 
I love their website too. This is like one of those websites, Lisa, that I could just sit on for hours and just, you know, I've only <laughs> tapped, I, I know I've gone through a few of the pages already, but I've only tapped just a, a fraction of what you can, you know, check out on their, on their website at, at seakeeper.com. And I didn't even get to their social media channels. They have some super cool stuff on their social yeah. media channels about, you know, boat shows uh, that are happening where you can experience that. Uh, they mentioned fishing too. There's some really cool fishing shots in there. So be sure yeah. to check out uh, the Sea Keeper Facebook page, Instagram page, and all the other social outlets that, you know, our friend Landon knows all about. Oh, and speaking of Landon, we should check in with him. Landon. We're getting better at these segues, right? I, I love the transitions when you come into me. It, it's it's so perfect every single time. I love it. I love it. <laughs> How's it going, everyone? Pretty good, uh, Things are well. We just learned a lot about Seakeeper and how to eliminate boat roll and have more fun out on the water. So pretty cool stuff. Super cool stuff. You know, I mean, nowadays we see joystick on almost all these new models and it's commonplace. And like five, 10 years ago, it wasn't so much. I right. really think five, 10 years from now, Sea Keeper is just going to be one of those things you climb aboard a new boat and you go, oh, this doesn't have a Sea Keeper. It's just, <laughs> it's weird not to have that thing. You know what I mean? So it, it's, it's amazing what they've been able to do since 2008 with their inception to now. At boat shows, they're always a huge hit, Kelly, just like you were saying, because everyone just, I mean, it's fun to check out the new boats. And then there's like the entertainment part. Of it. It's almost like an amusement part of the <laughs> boat show is hitting the Sea Keeper booth. Because yeah. You can climb aboard, do that thing where you're going up and down Rocking with the boat it, roll, yep. and then they turn it on and you're still trying to go and it just stops. I mean, it's it's really cool stuff. It's fun. It is it's, very fun. <laughs> it's sweet. So. I mean, it's, uh, and it's, uh, you mix. I wanted to ask it, but I was like, I'm. Let's let's leave it for the next conversation of because we always ask it with Seakeeper. I feel like what's next, but I mean, they just dropped the the Seakeeper one not too long ago, and that thing is yeah. just you know, it's it, it's finally it's, just getting in the hands of people too. Uh, it's really impressive. Yeah, I mean, it, and it's like he said, it's a two. What do you say? A, a two foot cube by like sixteen basically? inches. Yeah. yeah, it's like this big. Yeah, you know, it's it's literally just a small little uh, box. That you can yeah. put on your boat and and you saw it on that fishing boat right i mean it doesn't it's not a big footprint so no not I mean, at all i just it made me wonder you know comically in a way is you know you have a tender boat that's got like little tiny <laughs> like two little tiny gyros on it you know in the future who knows i mean <sighs> at, at this point i think they've really started to perfect the technology and perfect you know creating new ones so i well, think you know how they like show the mini ones like that when they when they're like, here, hold this. And they do that cool demonstration right, of that right. gyro and you hold yes. it and this little thing. It's like, could you put these things on a kayak and would it stay? <laughs> like this? You know, even out there on a kayak, it's, it's a great uh, question. Yeah. Especially some boats, some big boats go by in the wake and you're like, you know, flopping around and stuff. It's like, I'm just going to mount one of those to my paddle board and then just go <laughs> out and go. I'm all set. <laughs> no, I think I, it's definitely very interesting and, and can't wait to see what the future holds for Sea Keeper because I think it's going to be great things. Um, yeah, in course. terms of social media, I've yes. got some, uh, you know, I don't have the perfect segue into this, but this first video that I've got for you today, uh, maybe could have used a sea keeper on this vessel. <laughs> this isn't what I'm going to show you is not exactly boat roll, but I came across this video as I was scrolling and I had to show you guys. Um, Kelly, Ooh. forewarning, if the audio is on, yep. make sure that is muted. I believe yeah. there are some choice words in the background of this <laughs> because what everyone is about to see is very intense. Well, it looks crazy here. Let's uh, let's hope that audio is off. This this program is always crazy about that, but yep. I'll play it. And uh, if you if it's if it's on, just let me know. But I'll, I'll let you know. All right. Oh, so yeah, we're oh. we're good on audio here. But to describe wow. to our listener only is we've got a video of a gunship out of Antarctica. Um, you wow. can clearly see oh. it's a very uh, rough kind of <gasps> day out on the water. That is awesome. Oh my gosh! And uh, they take a massive wave over the bow. I mean, oh, I can't, can't, could not be a bigger wave if, if you're picturing it <laughs> they in your went head. They through it. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, kind of a harrowing experience in the, the audio. I think there are choice words, but I'll describe what's happening is there are, are the guy filming is is kind of getting excited at the beginning. Yep. And you can kind of hear some of the laughter and humor in the background. But as soon as 
the wave hits, everyone goes silent, and then you start to hear a couple alarms go off, and then wow. you hear the uh -huh. panic in everyone's voices, like, maybe this isn't as fun as we thought. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a very large gunship, you know, again, out of Antarctica. So, you know, I, I don't know personally at what level do you really start to worry that something could be wrong. Yeah. But with a massive ship like this, they're designed and built to take on, you know, this. heavy waves, crazy rough seas. Um, but the video, I mean, when I came across it, I was like, this is insane. This is amazing. I mean, oh it's just the, the pure power of nature right there. Yeah, that's, that's, and that's something, you know, I don't think uh, not much is going to help you in that situation. Yeah, I was like, a sea camper is not really going to help you out in this one, but, you know. <laughs> I think, it, you know what would, though, is a captain that knows what he's doing. And uh, I'm guessing, uh, you know, from, from the captains, we, we'd love to hear from you. But, you know, how do you take on waves? I mean, obviously, that caliber is, is immense. But, you know, what angle are you supposed to hit something like that to make it is yeah. least... Yeah, it, this is this is a larger scale haulover inlet that we're looking at. So just <laughs> right. kind of get with the captain on what they're doing here. Mimic that at haulover in Miami, and you'll be just fine. <laughs> and, and in that situation, it's kind of like one of those like, well, you have to go to the least amount of impact. You know, it's going to be a major impact, but you're right. like, okay, what's going to be the least uh, damaging? Because <laughs> you see yeah, a bunch of exactly. stuff on deck. It's it's tossed around, and they probably lost some things from that. Yeah, potentially. I mean, again, when it's when it's a gunship like that, you would think they they would have definitely prepared Everything ahead of time for down. this kind of yeah. sea and, and storm situation. So, um, but yeah, kind of an interesting video there. Right. My that is this is almost like a like if it were October time for social media because this I've got some scary stuff. So there's this <laughs> harrowing situation. I've got another harrowing situation. Oh of no! A video to show you. Okay. Don't worry too much, but I do want to let you know, sharks are evolving. They're on land. They are. Check out this video that has gone insanely viral this week. What is happening? Can you? Is this one muted? <gasps> it is muted. Oh my gosh! Wow, it's a. Uh, oh my gosh! It's a truck shark. It's a truck. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a, truck it's a shark. shark on the back of a semi trailer truck. Or no, yeah. it's it's a trailer. Yeah. I, oh my goodness! Yeah. So this truck is pulling a trailer where there's kind of a, a big cooler looking box on the yep. trailer, and there's there's a window on the on the cooler itself and you can see sharks <laughs> going by the window so basically what's happening is just a kind of a, <laughs> an aquarium looking thing is is yep. rolling down the highway and you got sharks that are on land now so if you were scared of sharks in the water they're <laughs> on land now too it's on the freeway right next to my car. <laughs> I, I, I see a very cheesy horror movie uh, you know with a very small budget in, in our near future of truck you know sharks on highways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. If as if Sharknado wasn't wasn't terrible enough. Now we've got this idea, Kelly. Thank you. No, but I I'm guessing they're probably transporting this this uh this shark or couple of sharks it looks like from A to B. So hey, I mean that's a pretty. I'm sure somebody had to invent that system there. And right. That, yeah. Was, and that's pretty it, crazy. That's a great point. To our audio only listeners, please don't think this is some kind of hillbilly jack kind of weird. <laughs> Like it's a it, it's a very it's definitely a professional that's handling this and the the whole crate and everything on it is is well done well designed mm -hmm. so yeah that was that one just went insanely viral i mean i was just scrolling through and i would see that video just keep popping up everywhere so the question that, really that i have is is the window necessary or is it they just want right? to see that shark as they're cruising down the highway the sharks need their entertainment it's not for us to look in it's for the sharks to kind of menacingly look at you as you're driving it's like yeah you're never safe is what basically what they're saying shark netflix for them yeah <laughs> but yeah, exactly. so there there you have it that was our uh, our social media for today's episode and uh thank you for checking it out wow you know terrifying waves and sharks nothing like a, little, a good <laughs> scare on a thursday afternoon right right <laughs> all right kelly what kind of final thoughts do you have on today uh, again, just thank you very much to uh, Will over at Seakeeper. It's always great to talk to that team. So much cool stuff coming out of their uh, their wheelhouse. They're inventing some crazy cool stuff and just you know basically changing the industry every one step at a time. So uh, shout out to Seakeeper and their squad over there. And uh, we can't wait to meet up with them again. And uh, can't wait to see what they do next. It's always really cool stuff. 
Yes, yes, it is. A bunch of engineers over there. Yep. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. Uh, tune in Thursdays at 11 a.m. on Eastern Standard Time uh, on Facebook or YouTube. And you can see or hear more episodes on the Lifestyles blog, on the MarineMax.com website, and your favorite podcast platform if you choose to do that as well. Yep. We hope you enjoyed today's broadcast. And as always, stay healthy and boat happy. We will see you next time. We hope you enjoyed this episode of From the Helm Boating Broadcast. To keep up with the latest news and notes in the world of boats, be sure to follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and wherever podcasts can be heard. Until next time, we'll see you out on the water.